Welcome to class. Uh, today, we're going to flip the script on this teaching, especially because I know practically what many believers go through in their various churches uh, because of lack of knowledge, especially when it comes to uh, church doctrine, uh, church leadership, positioning, and all that. So the background of today's story was that Jacob was about to die and then he began to bless his children. And now uh, Uncle Jacob or Daddy Jacob uh, knew the implication of what he was doing because we saw in previous chapters when Rachel was pregnant and was going to deliver Benjamin. As soon as Rachel delivered that child, Rachel called that child Benoni, meaning uh, son of sorrow. Oh, yeah child of my sorrow because she was in great pain and she was going to die it was sure she was going to die and so with her dying breath she named this child looking at it and thinking oh i'm sorrowful i'm going to die and then i had this child oh this child is a child of sorrow and as soon as the father arrived and he heard that the mother had named the boy benoni meaning child of my sorrow the father immediately changed it and said no this is son of my right hand this boy is not a child of sorrow. So the father refused to allow the mother's declaration on that boy's stand, and he insisted that the boy would not be Benoni, but Benjamin. And so the boy became Benjamin, meaning son of my right hand, because his father insisted that the boy would not be cursed and would not carry a cursed identity all the days of his life, but that it was going to be a blessing. So it wasn't as if Jacob didn't know the implication of what he was doing when in Genesis 49, he called all the sons and he said, let me tell you your future. When he was saying he was going to tell them their future, it was forth telling. He was going to use their various individual characteristics to now plot a graph to their future, which is wrong, which is bad. Now, because uh, if you have a child that, for example, very stubborn, obtuse, uh, priggish, uh, disobedient, you know that this child is definitely heading towards destruction. As a father, you know that this is the cause this boy is taking. You tell yourself, ah, this boy will not go to school. This boy will not go to class. This girl is following boy. This, uh, this girl is following bad friend. All of us know that those who choose early to follow those steps, that they are likely to end up badly. So it is not really prophetic if you tell somebody that is smoking in their hand that, hey, you are going to end up in prison. Or, hey, you are going to end up an addict. Your life will be empty. Or you are going to end up uh, having mental issues. That, that is not prophecy anymore. That is you using their current situation to plead or to, or, to, or to determine where they are going to be in future. That was what Jacob was going to do in Genesis 49. But that was not what Jesus Christ did when he was dealing with the apostles. When the apostles didn't believe in him at all, Jesus Christ blessed them and he gave them glory. He said, the glory that Father has given unto me, I give to you. Even though they didn't believe, even though they didn't have understanding, even though they didn't have knowledge, even though they didn't act as if they got it, Jesus blessed them. He didn't say, Peter, Peter, you have denied me. Therefore, your life will always be facing denial. But but you did not believe. Therefore, you will never believe again. Uh, Judas, Judas, you betrayed me. You will never know joy. You know, he, he didn't, he, Jesus didn't do that. But exactly this point was the, was the opposite of what Jacob did. Jacob looked at this child. So Reuben, his firstborn, slept with Bilhal. Uh, Bilhal was his concubine, the mother, the fourth wife, or the fourth, the house, the house help, or the maid of Rachel. Uh, the firstborn son slept with the father's, with the stepmother, so to say. And Jacob knew about it. And Jacob said to the boy, oh, you are so stable at water. You will not prosper. Over what? Over what? Like some of you now will be outraged. Yeah, why did he do that? Why did he do that? His father should have caused him, oh, you are not any better. That's a fact that the that we cannot absorb uh, the woman from this because the woman must be older, more experienced. When this boy was still in his diapers, the woman was already having children. 
So why would she? Why would what would be the connection between the two of them if the woman didn't play a very active role in it? Why didn't the father uh, do something else that caused the future of this child? All these realities, when we look at them, we realize that Jacob acted according to the flesh, and as by, by so doing, uh, he affected the future of his children. He, he basically led, uh, used the word of his mouth to chart the course they will follow. So the children he loved, he blessed. The children that showed him pepper, he caused. And those children, even though the cause is not remain forever, because later you will see that uh, Moses lifted Levi out of the cause. He also lifted, uh, uh, that is his own tribe, was Levi. He lifted him out of the cause. And uh, eventually he also lifted uh, another, another tribe out of the two of them. But eventually you notice that all the time has elapsed, and what he said, what Jacob said was not true, was not could be changed, was not written in gold, so it could be changed. It's just that it is necessary for somebody that has spiritual understanding to, to change it. Now, where am I going in practical lesson for today? Because you know that I, I can give you five minutes of the, you can always read that story yourself, but where are we going? You know how it is in church, when the pastor of the church will say, if I, if I suspend anybody, heaven is suspended over them, nothing will work for them again. Uh, I have a friend. Uh, recently, I saw in Abuja when I went recently. Uh, I knew a story when the pastor suspended her and her husband. Uh, the pastor suspended her from church, and then the husband tried to intervene, and then the pastor suspended the husband. And then the pastor began to say, The pastor's wife now came and said, Ha, you better go and beg my husband. Anybody that my husband suspends, their life is suspended. They will not be successful. They will not make it in life. Everything about them is upside down. You better go so that daddy will forgive you, so that daddy will bless you. So she said she wanted to, that she was already afraid. She wanted to go beg. Uh, she wanted to go and apologize to the pastor and say, Bishop, sorry, sir, bless me so that my life can get back on, on track. That she was going to do that. Then she met me on Twitter. So we were talking, uh, we were chatting. And then she told me, uh, she had not been to church in a year. I said, why? She said, uh, she was supposed to be in church to go and clean up the church once uh, one Saturday. Uh, but then her husband had something to do uh, outside of Lagos, so she, she followed her husband to do it. When the pastor's wife got to church, she realized that uh, the team that was supposed to come and clean the church did not come, and she was the team lead. So pastor's wife got angry, and when she got home, she told her husband. So the following Sunday, she was still not in church because she was still with her husband. The pastor got on the altar and announced that those who don't want to work for God, da, 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 da. how can you keep the house of your father at the house of God? I'm suspending her immediately. She's a bad example. She's it. She's that. That when she heard about it, she was like, oh my God, although she made a mistake by not going to or telling them that she wouldn't be in church to clean the church. What is the point of suspending her? And then after suspending her, they said, everything about you is suspended. Everything, your, your life is suspended. Your, your future is suspended until you come and apologize. <laughs> and when she told me that, I began to laugh. Because I personally do not, all those kind of things, they are rubbish, I'm telling you before God. If you are born again and are full of the Holy Spirit, no pastor, no prophet, no evangelist, no body is allowed to curse you. In fact, by default, the only thing they can say to you is God bless you. By default. Because Jesus has blessed you and nobody can change his word. I'm telling you in reality, unless you do something that personally, in fact, it has to be a very tough thing that could make any of them curse you. Unless you don't know your rights. Unless you don't know you are in Christ. So when she told me that, I laughed. I said, oh, forget about it. That's a lie. She said, ah, that uh, is not to happen. My husband's business has been destroyed. I said, oh, you, you, are, you, are, you have put your mind in that nonsense. It is not true. Nobody. He who God has blessed, let no man. Do you understand? Who can lay a charge against the elect? Who can? Who can? As in, at what level to what level? What pastor? What audacity? I can say it anyway, in front of any pastor, if I come to your church, I will say to your pastor is to his face. It is not allowed in the scripture for any child of God, born again Christian, to lay a course on another born again Christian. It doesn't matter whether they are members of your church or not.
It doesn't matter. These are the children of the blessed. Purchased by the blood of Jesus, you do not cost them. Do you know the price that they bought them for? Is blood. What, what, what did they do to you that you will not be causing the Christian? Say, because he didn't come and sweep church, his life is suspended. So I told the sister, I said, forget about it, Zelai. Oh, she said, ah, but I mean, I said, forget about it. Face your life. Don't even go and beg him. But don't even call him. You will see what will happen in the next few days. It got so good. It got so happened that uh, that was when her husband got the biggest contract. <laughs> When the person now heard that the husband has gotten a big contract and that the husband has built a house and that they are now prosperous, the person now called the husband. The person now said, Ha, after all the years I've labored over you people, after I've labored over you, God has blessed you now and you didn't even call me. Yeah, you didn't come. So the person was soliciting for title. <laughs> for title. I'm, not, I'm not joking. And when they called me, I laughed. I told them, I said, it is most believers, they will, have, they will be threatened. They will be afraid. They will not be able to stand their ground against, against the tyranny of, of those who are doing something that is illegal and not, and not in the body of Christ. Nobody has a right to curse a born-again Christian. It is not allowed. You cannot lay a curse against a Christian. Apostle Paul faced the Corinthian church that showed him pepe. Apostle Paul couldn't curse them. He disciplined them, he chastised them, but he couldn't curse them. In fact, he couldn't even say that they are going to hell. Go and read the book of Corinthians. You will not see one place where Apostle Paul said, Corinthian people, one of you is sleeping with his father. See, oh, the same thing that Benjamin did, that, that Jacob was cursing him in Genesis 49, in the book of 1 Corinthians, one guy was also sleeping with his father's wife. Go and read what Apostle Paul said. If he's going to follow precedent, Apostle Paul ought to say, when I looked at the scriptures, Jacob, what Jacob did was that he caused the person to be with his father's wife. You are sleeping with your father's wife. So therefore, the curse of Reuben is upon you. If he did that, all of us will say, yeah, that's, that's biblical. It's, it's precedent. Uh, when we read that uh, Reuben slept with Bilha, what did Jacob do? He caused, he caused Reuben. So if anybody is sleeping with his father's wife, then if I was poor causes the person, the apostle has only followed precedence. It would make sense. But Apostle Paul could not. Apostle Paul could not cause this guy. Apostle Paul mentioned this case. Apostle Paul said, you have to chase him out of the church first. He said, guys, have a meeting. Chase him out of the church so that God can punish him. Because what he has done is bad. But as long as he's in the church, nobody can do anything to him. Chase him out of the church first. Go and read the book of Corinthians. It means when you are in the garden of the Lord, when you are a member of the body of Christ, nobody can touch you. Not demons, not the enemy, not powers of darkness. I'm telling you for God before God. If you know this truth, it will set you free for life. Does it make you uh, less of a good believer? No. Does it mean that if you have a duty in church, you will not do it? No. Does it mean if you have Bible study, you will not? Are you not attending Bible study now? You, 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 you had a very busy day. You are here. You are here listening to me. Was it by compulsion? No. You came with joy. You wanted to hear the word of God. The heart that the Father has given unto you is a heart of love. You want to please him. It is a natural thing. God did not bring us a spirit of fear. No. Any pastor that is ruling his church with fear is not ruling by the spirit of God. I'm telling you, there, there is no scripture backing anybody ruling, trying to impose, put fear in the heart of church members so that they will be shaking. They will, they will, no, 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 no. That is, that is a demonic way of being a Christian. And I know churches that do it. I know pastors that will get on the altar and begin to curse members because they left or because they, know they will be reading from Jeremiah. Reading. Then trying to, to, because they had insecurity issues. Then trying to, they're trying to force it down people's throat, trying to bring a lot of nonsense doctrine out of the Old Testament, trying to use it to, like to, to use it to Jimmy Shimmy <laughs> Christians because they too didn't raise mature children. They raised Nepios. If I go to any church, any church, I'm telling you, any, it doesn't matter who the pastor is. As long as I know that I'm standing right by the scriptures, if the pastor, if the pastor tries it, I'll call him out. I say, no, 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 don't ever do that when I'm around. Even I'm not here, it's fine. Whatever you do with your church, but if I'm standing in your church, you will not do anything contrary to the scriptures. We are the children of the blessed one. We are blessed. 
we are blessed. This is our nature in Christ. This is your nature. This is your reality. So if you are here and one pastor has suspended you, one pastor has caused you, a prophet has caused you, uh, one man of God has said something negative, somebody saw a vision and the vision is negative about your family, cancel the nonsense. It is not true. As long as you believe it, to him that you believe, you become a slave. You subject yourself to it if you believe it. Don't ever, don't ever believe it. Say to yourself, I'm a child of the blessed. I'm a loved child of Christ. Born of love. Born full, full of all things. Born in a generation that will know no sorrow. Born specially for a season and a time like this. Do you know, before I, before I came forth, before I came forth, I was spoken forth. What was written of me? I had written in the word of God long before I came. Go and read it. Go and read it in the book of John chapter 14, 15 and 16 and 17. The blessings of Jesus Christ upon the church. Go and read it in the book of Revelation chapter 4 and 5. The, the, the prophecy that was spoken about me. The Bible says they shall rule and they shall reign. A person that is accursed does not rule and it does not reign. An accursed person is only blessed. You must understand this thing. It must be, it must be in your consciousness all the time. You must tell it to your mother, tell it to your parents when they are when they are shaking because of one spiritual whatever. Now let me take it a step further. If your biological father or mother causes you, it is not true. The Lord will let you know who you are as a believer. That your somebody will come to me, hey, my father caused me before he died. Since that time I didn't prosper. I will laugh. It is not, it is not, there is no biblical standing for it. Let me tell you, in this one that, that Jacob did to his children, did I not tell you that Moses changed it? It was not supposed to be forever. Did Moses not make the same tribe of Levi? Did he not make them the ones that the whole of Israel are feeding for free all the days of their life? Did he not take priests out of them? Did he not take prophets out of them? Was Moses not from the tribe that was supposed to be accursed? The tribe that was supposed to be accursed was Moses not, not part of the tribe. Did he not come from the seed of Levi himself, Aaron and Miriam? Were they not from, from the Levite tribe? Did, did, did you not see how, how they were elevated in the time of Moses? These things, God didn't program that error should be among his children, that he, the causes belong to the devil, blessings belong to the Lord. It is, an, it is not right to ascribe unto the Lord and his children the things that do not belong to the light, that belong to darkness. You do not have to control people by cursing them. You don't have to put people in check by cursing them. You don't have to lay a curse on anybody. In fact, Jesus Christ said, bless, curse not. There was no provision, no provision for anybody to be cursing anybody. James said it, that if you open your mouth, sweet water and bitter water are coming out at the same time. That's why you have these realities. The mouth of a, of a blessed one is always going to be filled with blessing. The mouth of their cause is going to be filled with causes. You must know this. Nobody can cause me. Biological father cannot. If, if, no matter what you do, when you say sorry, you mean it. That's the end of the matter. In fact, if you become born again, ah, the blood of Jesus washes away all causes automatically. I'm not kidding. Some of you may think it's too, too, too good to be true. I, I speak to you as one who has walked through several, several dimensions of reality, both in the flesh and in the spirit. The things that I've experienced in my life, the things I've seen, I know for sure that if somebody calls you, it can affect you. If you have no knowledge, I know for sure that if somebody calls you, it cannot affect you. If you understand who you are in Christ, your identity matters. You know how they will call somebody and the person will say, hey, you've cursed me and everything will go downhill. And they will call somebody else and the person will say, your words was no water. I was having a correction with somebody. Let me just put it that way because of the general, this is the general class. I was having a correction with somebody. A uh, person is highly placed, a pastor. Uh, I used to work with him. And we had this altercation. Uh, it was very overbearing, and I, I just didn't want to have it anymore that day. And then the guy said, Ha, I'm talking to you now, you're arguing with me. Later, you will not come back in five years' time. You will come and beg. You will be saying that I should bless you because your life is not going forward. Ah! When I heard it, my head, my head sparked. I said, Everything you have, everything. I acknowledge that you are richer than. I mean now, 
and that we are more prosperous. After that time, I was 37. It was close to 60. I said, everything you have now, by the time I'm 45, everything you ever have, by the time I'm 45, they will be coins to me. Coins. Do you understand the dimension of grace I walk in? You, your money is old money. You labored for money. You worked hard. I am the child of the blessed one. By virtue of who I am, royalty, diadem, glory follows me. Do you know who you are speaking with? Ah, hey, everybody started laughing at the time. But I'm telling you, as I, in fact, one of the first things I did, we did the first one year after that incident, was that all the cars he had, all the kind of cars he had, I bought exactly a replica. I'm not joking, no. I bought replica. Like, rep, he had this car, you know, all the cars he had. I bought replica of everything. I put it in front of my house. When his mechanic came to my house, mechanic saw my house, mechanic said, ah, oh God. I said, no, I just wanted to, I just wanted to. Nobody has a right, has any right to speak to anybody who understands the gospel that way. I can only bless you. I can only bless you. If you step on my toe, I can only bless you. And you can only bless me too. That's a fact. Does that mean that there is no provision for um, punishment in case we, we do something wrong? There is. There is room for chastisement. But there is correction in love. There is room for correction in love. God himself corrects us. We know the story of the prodigal son, how God allowed him to go through the stress he went through so that he can come back to his senses. There are a lot of provisions in the church for checks and balances so that there is, there is no miscarriage of justice, but none of them is a cause. Go and read all the apostles, their letters. You will see that they didn't even have the room to curse anybody. They didn't. They punished. When they were talking to that guy that wanted to buy the Holy Ghost, punished him. He said for a while, for a season. He didn't say you'll be blind forever. He said you'll be blind for a season. That's punishment. That is chastisement. That is not a cause forever. When you read the scriptures in context, you understand. You know, I have met women. They say, hey, this man of God, he cursed me. He said I will never have a child. Ah! I said, and the man of God is dead now. Hope is gone for me. I will be laughing. I was saying, do you, do you understand what you are saying in essence? You are saying that the Holy Spirit is living in you. The Spirit of God is living in you. And then somebody caused you. And as a result of that, the person also caused the Holy Spirit. I said, because the Holy Spirit does not move independent of you. It's your life now. You are his life. He directs your path. He teaches you everything. He's the life that is is the one that is alive in you. He's the one not doing the course of your life. Just imagine that the Holy Spirit is inside, inside somebody. And one human being caused that person so that the Holy Spirit is taking that person to level 20. The Holy Spirit started working with somebody from level zero, begins to build the person up so that the person can get to level 20. And then somebody now caused the person. And then the Holy Spirit and that person, they now down tools at level two. The Holy Spirit now said, sorry, my brother. I want to help. God said I should help you, but they have caused you. So because they have caused you, I cannot help you again. You see, because when they curse you, they curse me too. So both of us will sit down there until the man will remove the curse. Does that make sense to you? I mean, when you think about it, can anybody curse God? Can God be living inside anybody? And then that person will be subject to any man's curse. And then somebody will say, ah, there's an you know, there's Kiniko, which is where I'm going now. The issue of covering. So many men of God will use the word covering. As long as you're under my covering, as long as you're under my covering, as long as you're under <laughs> that thing is pure rubbish. Let's serve the Lord with purity. Let's love the Lord. Let's not put anything that is not scriptural. Let's not put it as part of the reality of a Christian. Jesus never used the word covering. I was supposed to not use it. In fact, there was no allusion to it from any of the apostles. None. But when we come to these people that want to gather people, gather people and chalk them, and make sure that the people begin to serve them as if they are gods, and psychologically brainwash people into doctrine, then you begin to hear, you traveled two days ago. Why did you travel without telling me? You are leaving my cover. If anything happens to you now, who do you think? All that thing. Please, let it go with the, this, this generation. Let it go with them. I beg you. Don't introduce it as a pastor if you are here. 
don't introduce it to your members. It is, it is, it is a sign that you don't know the gospel. And that you want to put people in bondage instead of setting them free. Religious people like to do that so that they can control all this movement. They can, they can do self-righteousness. They are, it will not make you any different from the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Don't do that. Don't do that. By the grace of God, God has made you a large tree upon which many people come to seek shade, uh, to perch, and to, to draw water, to draw wisdom. That is a good thing. But when the season to fly comes, let them fly. When the other people will come, you must not skate people into my covering, my covering. I said, no, 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 please. No, no, no. It is, it is an absolute travesty of the gospel for anybody to claim he or she has a covering that is more than the Holy Ghost. Let me show you the true covering in the Bible. In the book of Exodus, as soon as the children of Israel came out of Egypt, as soon as they crossed the Red Sea, the Bible said that suddenly there was a pillar of fire and there was a cloud of glory that covered them, that covered them like an atmosphere. That is a covering. You see what a covering is? That covering is the supernatural power of God to protect his people. It is not given to any pastor. That covering that you saw in the book of Exodus, that the children of Israel were under it and the sun cannot see them during the day. And at night, the cold cannot touch them because desert is really very cold. In the night, they would have been shivering. But because of the pillar of fire, it kept all of them warm. In the afternoon, the sun would have been too much. They would have been parched. But in the afternoon, it, the cloud of glory prevented the sun from hitting them. The Bible said that the sun did not stand there by day nor the moon by night. It said they protected them all the days, carried them upon eagle's wing, all the days till the days of their, their old age. Jesus Christ, the Bible said that clearly. That atmosphere that I'm talking about, that is the Holy Ghost. That was the manifestation of the Holy Spirit in the Old Testament. See the way the Holy Spirit protected them covered them. Nobody could cause them. In fact, when they didn't know in the book of Numbers, when they didn't even have any knowledge that Balaam wanted to cause them, Balaam and Barak wanted to cause them, God was fighting for them in absentia. There was a, a, a record that Balaam wanted to cause them, but you will see that Moses was not actively involved. The children of Israel did not even know that somebody wanted to cause them. Those people are trying to cause them from Moab. The Holy Spirit prevented them from being caused. Why? Because they are under his atmosphere. They are under his covering. All of us are under the covering of the Holy Spirit. You are not under the covering of any pastor. You are not under the covering of any minister of the gospel. You are not under the covering of any minister. Believe that today. Set yourself free from such class talks and nonsense. The Lord has set you free. The spirit that is in you is the spirit of liberty. Enjoy that. Does that now mean that you are going to be misbehaving? No. Like I said earlier, you had the option of not coming here tonight. Nobody forced you. This is 203 people on this call. Nobody forced anybody. You came because the Bible called you obedient children. You are obedient children. You do the will of God. You do it by default. You do it naturally. You are the beloved of the Lord. You always please the Father. You want to please Him. You want to grow. You want to do the things that are of the Spirit. And you are doing them willingly. There is no In fact, when I was a parish pastor, maybe if I see 10 people at Bible study, I'll be happy or 15. Ah! But anytime we have a meeting, people will show up and we are not doing, you'll be suspended. If you don't come, suspension. If you go, so no, no, no. When the atmosphere is right and the spirit is right, his people are always willing in the days of his power. You will be willing. But when you are forced to do religion, that's when there is lethargy. That's when there is headache. And that's when there has to be threats. There has to be threats to make you comply. Nobody needs to threaten anybody to serve the Lord. No. We are not Muslims. We do not kill anybody. We are children of the blessed one. We are children of love. That is our nature. Our DNA is warmth. It is spirit. It is life. It is glory. It is dancing. You know what he described the kingdom of heaven? He said the kingdom of heaven is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. That is our life. Our life is a life of imputed righteousness. Christ has become our righteousness. We live a life of peace. We are not troubled by nothing. And we are full of joy. Therefore, you cannot come to the church of God and your eyes is turning and the pastor is looking at you in bad eye and you are not free and there is by, by side talk, there is rumor. No, 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 no. All those things are foot of the flesh. They shouldn't even be in a gathering. 
Let us therefore hold forth to the truth of the word of God, that the word that as long as you are in Christ and you are blessed, nobody can curse you. Not anyone that is spiritual or anybody that is your parent or anything. Nobody can lay a curse over you. You are the children of the Lord and you are the blessed of the Lord. If you have been blessed by this class, I like it to shout glory. Hey. Right. That's next week Wednesday. Message to the God bless you.